A new confrontation is emerging in Europe between France and Germany over the merits of fiscal confrontation five years after the downturn in Europe began. This is Steve Wiseman with the Peterson Institute for International Economics, here with Nicholas Veron and Jacob Kierkegaard to talk about this new confrontation. Nicholas, first of all, tell us what it amounts to. Who? Tell us, give us more details. Well, basically, the French government has not been doing the sort of fiscal consolidations they should have done under the rules that were approved unanimously by euro area member states. And they have been given a free pass in the past, but now they are asking for another free pass. And uh, basically, the reaction of both Germany and the European Commission seems to be this time it doesn't wash. If we give you a free pass now, we really undermine the credibility of our whole system. Is France uh, in danger of being punished or sanctioned in some way? Yes, it is. And because uh, the view in Brussels and Berlin at this point is that if now the sanctions that are written in the agreements that France signed up for uh, are not triggered, then uh, it becomes a really totally not credible piece of paper. Jacob, Germany is leading the way on this. Uh, why are the Germans so concerned about this? Well, I think there's several reasons. I mean, first of all, the Germans tend to have a somewhat legalistic approach to a lot of EU uh, rulemaking, and that they really believe that the rules are in place to be kept uh, and adhered to. And, and one of the things that they always fear in, in, in these issues is this issue of moral hazard, that basically, on the one hand, uh, if you give, as Nicholas said, France two years to do a, f a fiscal consolidation, and then you don't do it, uh, uh, in Paris, well then if you do it again, you basically make a mockery of the rules. And I think the other issue at play here is that it isn't just Germany. Uh, clearly Germany is speaking up the most, but the reality is that all the smaller member states of the EU, especially those who maybe have been sanctioned before uh, uh, under uh, uh, these rules, they are very keen on making sure that also large countries can be sanctioned that there isn't a, 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 you know, a, a difference made between uh, small and large economies. So in some ways, Germany has the votes uh, to this. They have the support of the majority uh, of European member states. But Jacob, Europe is still, except for Germany, struggling to recover from a recession uh, that is, as I said before, gone on for years. Isn't uh, there some doubt whether this is a wise policy in terms of uh, helping Europe really recover from this downturn? Well, there, there's no doubt that if you adopt a strict sort of Keynesian interpretation, then having additional fiscal consolidation at this very moment may seem counterintuitive. But at the same time, I think the counterargument uh, is that Europe spent, you know, several years putting together an institutional response, a change of the rules in response to the crises. And now we're at the first time at which these rules are actually being tested. So if it turns out that you can actually just not adhere to these rules, well then Europe has essentially wasted uh, you know, the five years since the crisis began and the credibility of, of the entire overhaul of European fiscal surveillance rules have been wasted. Okay, uh, Jacob just said it was counterintuitive, but is it counterproductive? What's the argument that France is making, Nicholas? I think you really have two logics here, as Jacob has explained. There is a logic which says the rules are stupid, let's ditch them first and uh, do the right thing, which at this point is uh, not doing austerity and uh, discuss about what new framework would make sense. And Germany is making an argument which is maybe more holistic, which is to say credibility of our institutions come first, so you have to first abide by the rules, and trust is there, and we can discuss about how to amend them. So you can see it in a way as an issue of sequencing. And I think, frankly, there are merits of bo on both sides, uh, but it is... I, I have some sympathy with the German argument. I think at this point, if you don't apply the sanctions, you're really making a statement that this whole set of rules is just uh, a pure smokescreen, and I don't think that's good for Europe. Uh, so my view is that the quantum of fiscal adjustments that we're talking about for France is not making as much of a macroeconomic effect 
as the trust implications of ditching the rules altogether. And therefore, uh, at this very point, I think the French government basically played this whole game very poorly. Mm -hmm. They should have seen it coming. They should have prevented this confrontation for the sake of the credibility of the EU framework. And frankly, finding themselves in this situation at this point is pretty embarrassing. Is it too late to have a compromise solution, first Nicholas and then Jacob? I think it's not too late to have a compromise solution, but I think the compromise solution will be an embarrassment for France. Jacob, what would it look like? Well, I, I think the classical one is, is what most people, myself included, will, will be hoping for is kind of an Italian solution, meaning that the French government uh, uh, does what the Italian government under Prime Minister Renzi is doing right now, which is essentially making, you know, breaching some of the same fiscal rules uh, that France is in danger of breaching, but at the same time, seemingly at least, being much more serious about implementing potentially far-reaching labor market reforms so that you have a quid pro quo, that you are being given you know, forgiveness for breaching the fiscal rules, but at the same time you're making it up for it by structural reforms. The real problem, uh, therefore, in a political sense for France is that they have nothing to show. They have no meaningful structural reforms, and they are still breaching the fiscal rules. Gentlemen, thank you very much.